well, it's getting better now with early intervention, but at one point it was about half of all kids with autism who never developed functional language. Um, serious problems in what's called social reciprocity, um, you know, making eye contact, reading social signals and being able to use those to communicate mm -hmm. with other people, mm -hmm. all very difficult for people with autism. And so um, I was studying their language, um, trying to identify um, strengths and weaknesses across different language domains. So conversation, narrative, storytelling, um, standardized language tests, uh, and then and then drawing ties between these these profiles and um, what we hypothesized were uh, underpinning their cognitive abilities. So social cognition, uh, executive function. These are um, Cog cognitive domains that have been hypothesized to explain um, many of the features associated with autism. And what we found were um, that the, the deficits um, in, uh, observed in autism uh, in, in the language domain were highly related to their problems uh, understanding social stimuli, so problems in social cognition. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense, you know, if, um, if you have trouble reading someone else's thoughts and feelings, you're going to have a really hard time engaging in a fluent mm -hmm. conversation with them, um, mm -hmm. which requires, uh, you know, inferring background information. So what what is this person coming to the conversation with? Do I need to provide background to so that they know what I'm talking about? It also involves um, reading someone's thoughts and, and feelings to gauge whether they're interested or, or mm -hmm. you know, are they following me? Do I need to provide more information? Um, so all of these social cognitive mm -hmm. skills are critical in, in language learning and language functioning. Then I did um, postdoctoral research focusing on um, parents of people with autism, studying what's called the broad autism phenotype. And there's strong evidence for um, autism being a genetically based disorder, and um, but the uh, the likelihood is that there are many genes that contribute to autism, um, and maybe different constellations of genes in different mm -hmm. families. So it's just a it's a mm -hmm. real challenge. Mm -hmm. Um, one way to meet this challenge would be to focus on traits, or phenotypes we call them, these mm -hmm. features that um, may be linked to more basic uh, sets of genes, smaller, smaller sets of genes. Uh, then we collect a blood sample, that's what these are for, um, and we send it over to the biospecimen facility here at UNC where they store it, well the first they extract the DNA for us and store it. And then the next step of the study will be to actually look and see whether there's genetic variation related to how they're, do, they're doing on these tasks. Mm -hmm. So Fragile X is, we know the gene, it's um, um, identified and we know the, the patterns of transmission, so all moms of a child with full, full mutation Fragile X will be carriers of the gene in its pre-mutation state, unless they have Fragile X themselves, um, but that's not too common. And, uh, and so, well, I should take, take a step back. Uh, we see incredible overlap in um, in autism and fragile X, where anywhere from like 30 to 50 percent of kids with fragile X are also diagnosed with autism. So this leads us to believe that this gene may play a role in autism symptomatology. Mm -hmm. So um, thus the interest in fragile X, which is also mm -hmm. just a really interesting population in itself. Um, so they focus on kids with fragile X, kids, kids with autism, kids with autism and fragile X, um, and kids with Down syndrome um, who are in there for, as a control. Um, and uh, we're looking for across different language domains, so pragmatic language, structural language, um, and then these social cognitive skills, theory of mind, um, where is there overlap between fra fragile X and autism? Really just trying to, to refine our, our understanding of, of the phenotypic profiles of these groups. Um, so that we can then infer the role of this candidate gene, FMR1, in autism symptomatology and particular features in Fragile X. And we can when you look at this, what does it look like? A rock. Feel it. What is this really? Sponge. Mm -hmm. It's a sponge, but when you look at it, what does it look like? It looks like a rock. Great. That's it. The, the ability to distinguish reality from appearance yeah. is one of the precursor okay. skills to theory of mind. What do you think is in this box? Candy. Let's look inside and see. 
Oh. <laughs> what is it really? Buttons. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Emily saw this box earlier. What do you think she thinks is in the box? She's going to think that there's candy in the box. And then we would have her come in and look and be like, oh, let's, let's see what she thinks. Buttons. Now, if I were a child who didn't have theory of mind, mm -hmm. I would have said, she's going to think that there's buttons in there. Yeah. It's this ability mm -hmm. to differentiate your own informed state of mind from someone's naive state of mind that, mm -hmm. that we're getting at here. Mm -hmm. And you'll see by about the age of five, typically developing kids can pass this test yeah. without problem. Um, but you'll see, you know. Like three-year-olds, we've done it with three-year-olds that don't get this. But they get the other tasks, so. But an older um, person with autism, and only people with fragile X, would have difficulty with this task. Mm -hmm. I would say if you're so if you're interested in research um, mm -hmm. with language disordered populations, I think um, find a professor who's doing the kind of research that that you're interested in, mm -hmm. or working with a population that you're interested in, and um, ask if they're if they'd be willing to meet with you. Um, and I think if you can if you can um, find an opportunity to volunteer in a lab to actually get mm -hmm. research experience with them, uh, it's invaluable. Mm -hmm. and that was how I started, and um, you know, right. it was. It's nice to to know early on that whether or not you're interested in research, and that's mm -hmm. the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, it's also essential to have um, that sort of experience if you want to go to graduate school. Mm 